Hey guys, I'm back. And I am in a different place now, as you can see. I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking up some awesome thoughts. You've been focusing on your thought diets, cooking up some confident thoughts, some competent thoughts that aren't catastrophic. All right, so where did I leave off? Oh, I was talking about getting a taste of the goal, just getting a taste. And yeah, you know, so first we need to learn to detach and not try to control and maintain that same feeling that we get once we accomplish it, right? Because it is gonna go away, it always does. You have the moment on the podium, you have the moment on the stage, you see that goal weight on the scale, it's there, then it's gone. So we have to expect that we're not going to be able to hold on to that. However, we can hold on to, because we're gonna ask ourselves and be very conscious about what we learned along the way, what we changed, what we shifted. That's what I mentioned before. And because the goal ends, then the next question can be, okay, what's the next challenge gonna be for me? Because I have some skills and some abilities that I did not before. So we want to though, we wanna savor the accomplishment, obviously. We don't just wanna say, okay, now what? We do wanna take that self-assessment and ask like, wow, like look how far I've come. Here's what I've achieved and here's how I'm different and here's how I'm a more complex person. Remember, what are the thoughts that we want to fill our minds with? What is that diet that we're on going to look like? What's our thought nutrition, okay? How do we wanna feel? That's the question we have to ask ourselves in order to decide how we're going to act. Now, I wanted to hit on a couple things because that fear is a stress. It creates a stress response, right? That, that fight or flight. We have a choice though, whether we can perceive the event um, as fearful or if we move into a place of freedom and focus. So look at it, fear versus freedom and focus. And our perception is everything, guys. If we encounter a stressful situation or there's a circumstance that is maybe not ideal, right? Say we notice this thought that is, I, I don't know what to do with this success. Or what if I can't maintain my weight? We've reached the goal. Now we're asking like, what if I can't maintain? It's those what if questions you have to watch. But you notice that and you notice a sense of or a feeling in your body of what you would define as anxiety, of fear, okay? In moments like that, whether we decide to move into, okay, this is, you know what, this, this is just data, it's information, okay? And we're looking at it as this is a space where I can now focus and move into a sense of freedom versus like this is catastrophic i'm gonna I, I, i'm I, it's chaotic and i don't know how to handle it no matter what you're still going to have a release of those stress hormones all right and your heart rate's gonna go up okay and you're gonna have a, a dump of some adrenaline in your body and with stress, whether it's dis stress, bad stress, or you stress, EU stress, you're gonna have an increase in blood glucose, right, to your brain and your muscles. All right, here's the difference though. Look this up, D-H-E-A. When you perceive the stress as positive, as something that you can move through Okay, resiliently as something that is information for you to take to guide that next best step forward, you have an increase in DHEA. And what does that do? It increases your recovery, all right? 
and it increases your learning. And in a previous, it might have been a post, it might have been a video, I can't remember now, I mentioned post-traumatic stress growth. Okay, That is how powerful our perception and our thoughts are. We can have a non-ideal situation. Ah, I don't like this. It doesn't really feel good. If I could change it, I would, but it's not in my power. However, here's how I'm going to move through this and see this as something that can empower me. Those thoughts right there completely change the physiology of our bodies. All right. Now, I think I mentioned this in another video, but how do we give fear the finger, right? How do we position our attention in a way that allows us to move through stress more resiliently? Well, I think the best way, and this is what I used during my entire dissertation process, it was to ask, how can I use what I'm learning and how can I use this tremendous amount of effort and energy that I'm putting into this to contribute to others. And everything that I was learning, like I was using to write my book and everything that I was learning, I was using to create content for the diet doc license owners to train them with. And everything I was using, I was contributing to the, to the service of others by teaching my clients, all of my mental edge clients were gleaning all of this information and soaking it up and being sponges for what I was learning through the process. If you guys can ask yourselves the question, what can I contribute based on what I've learned? Turn that fear into a fire for others so you're not the only one in the picture you have a mission bigger than yourself, fear goes away. It completely goes away because others are benefiting. You know, when we put others at the forefront, if we put service at the forefront and we're no longer kind of in our heads and, you know, going into that self-conscious mode because we're overthinking, it completely changes the game, guys. Okay. I will end here, get into your kitchens, and concoct some creative and confident thoughts.